fall on us. Touch our hands, Lord. Touch our hearts. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. The anointing of God. That burden removing. You'll destroy. Power of God. We want the person. And we want the presence of God to fall on us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. How many love the Lord this morning? How many are in love with the Lord? Praise There's one thing to love it. To be in love. Yes. Lord, thank you. In love and the loving at the yes. same time. It's just wonderful. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, I, I love the Lord. That song says, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he pitied my every groan. As long as I live and trouble rise, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hasten to his throne. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, again, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome again to House of Faith Christian Center, located in beautiful Smyrna, Tennessee. We're glad to be in God's service one more time. And we want to say good morning to all of our Facebook family. If you're watching this by Facebook, by live, or if you're watching by other social media outlets, whether it be Instagram or YouTube or, or what other social media ad, it said, welcome, 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 Pastor Ronnie. D. Simmons House of Faith Christian Center. And we're so glad that you have tuned into this broadcast this morning. And we just truly believe that one word from God, my friend, will change your life forever. Glory to God. Like people say, you know, prayer changes things, but prayer also changes people too. Praise the Lord. And when you hook up with the presence of God and the power of God and the person of God, something's about to change. Hallelujah. So again, thank you. I do ask you to go ahead and hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. You watch this by Facebook Live at the House of Faith Christian Center that we have a threefold vision. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. We have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Praise the Lord. So we're glad that you've taken out of your busy schedule uh, to be a part of this worship experience. We've got believers here. Praise the Lord. They Listen, they're on the edge of the seat. Praise the Lord. Listen, they've got the spiritual napkin around their neck. they got the knife that forked out. Praise the Lord. And they said, hey, we're ready to dig in. Glory to God. And eat at the table that God has prepared for us. And so we're glad that. So we want you to be excited like we're excited and so excited. Listen, you get this. Go ahead and start contacting people in your family, your friends, your employees, employers, uh, uh, distance far. It don't matter. Go ahead and contact them. Hit like and hit share at the same time. Contact those family members. You know who they are. Praise the Lord. I remind you one more time. Their mama them, daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, pookie them, shakuita them, all the hymns. Contact them and let them know that House of Faith Christian Center, that we are live and on the air. And we just truly in a blessed time in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. This being the day that the Lord has made, we've come to rejoice. And to be glad in it. So we'll get right into this word of God. So listen, we want you to go ahead and get your Bibles out uh, that you have. No matter what translations have. Listen, go get a pen, get a paper, get some, a highlighter. Prepare to take some copious notes. Praise the Lord. It's going to be so awesome in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So again, thank you, thank you. Hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. This broadcast, it comes on. Listen, it comes not only as locally, but listen, it is nationally and it's also internationally as well. We thank God to our brothers and sisters over in the Congo, in Kinshasa and Central Africa, our brothers and sisters over in the Philippines, uh, all over this world. And we're just so excited that we're able to come and to say, thus saith the Lord. So if you would go ahead and get your Bibles out. So I want you to go ahead and hold up your Bibles up high. Here at House of Faith, we make a confession every time we get up with the Word of God because we know it's the Word of God that changes life. It's the Word. It is a written Word. It is a spoken Word. It is the living Word. So if you would say these familiar words after me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive the dynamic, the powerful, the ever-increasing, the life-changing, 
word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I boldly confess. I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess. I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess. After hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. For thine is the kingdom, and mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power, and mine is the power. For thine is the glory, and mine is the glory. Forever, and ever, and ever. For this is my receiving day, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go ahead with our handouts right now. Again, if you're watching by Facebook Live, go ahead and hit like and hit share. Hit like and hit share. Glory to God. Now, this year, God has given us a theme. And our theme this year is a grace to follow God's Son in 2021. Scripture that God has given us is Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Mark chapter 8, verse 34, and in the Amplified Version, it says, And Jesus called to him the throne with his disciples and said to them, If anyone intends to come after me, now watch this now, to come after Jesus, all right? What do you mean come after Jesus? Come after to who he is, come after what he said, come after to what he taught, come after what he, he commanded, come after what he did for us on the cross. See, you come after, that's what you're coming after. All right? He says, now this is what you have to do now. He said, let him or her deny himself, forget, ignore, disown, and lose sight of himself and his own interests. And then it says, listen, and take up his cross and joining me as a disciple and siding with my party, follow with me continually, cleaving steadfastly to me. And so we've been teaching uh, for the last several uh, uh, weeks on the subject, following Jesus as our shepherd. Following Jesus as our shepherd. Take a look at the 23rd Psalm. Now, we stated of all the passages in the Bible, Psalms 23 may be the most quoted and the most beloved. In Psalms 23, King David, who is referred to as a man after God's heart, and the sweet psalms of Israel compares the Lord to a shepherd who lovingly tends to his flock. So as we look at the 23rd Psalm in the New King James Version, it says, this is a psalm of David. It says this, for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For though you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. <laughs> Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And listen, you want to go back and uh, go, you can go to our website and you can just get uh, previous mess of these messages that we have. And I want to tell you, they're life changing. Why? Because, see, we're not just getting a revelation of the 23rd Psalm. We were getting a revelation of the shepherd. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so this 23rd Psalm, a revelation of the shepherd. And so as we look at this 23rd Psalm, we say we learn that the all-powerful Jehovah Roach, which means Jehovah is my shepherd, the all-seeing, the all-knowing, the ever-present God tenderly cares for those who belong to him. So we got to find out who actually belongs to the Lord. Because there are people who say, well, I belong to the Lord. Well, let's see if we qualify. So in John chapter 10, verse 2 through verse 4, we find out those who actually belong to the Lord. John chapter 10, uh, verse 2 through verse 4 in the New Living Translation. It says, but the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And watch this now. The sheep recognize his voice and come to him. <coughs> he calls his own sheep by name 
and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, watch, he walks ahead of them. Now notice again. And they follow him, why? Because they know his voice. So here it is. The shepherd walks ahead of the sheep. Secondly, the sheep follow him. And the third, listen, they recognize his voice. These are those who belong to the Lord. Not because you're a good person. Not because you try to do everything right. Not because uh, of this. No, it's because of who are you following? See, that's why I ask people. I say, who are you following? Those who are belong to the shepherd, they follow the shepherd. And not only do they follow him, but watch this. They hear his voice. Why? Because they recognize his voice as the shepherd. So today's message, we are uh, uh, at part seven. Uh, I believe this part seven. Uh, it, it's so many, I don't know. I just got to put part seven. It says, following Jesus as our pro prescribed shepherd. Follow Jesus as our prescription. In other words, uh, uh, we got a prescription today. Anybody ever had a prescription? The doctor write a prescription, huh? And then what you do when you write it, uh, uh, he writes it out, he give it to you, or he calls it in. And then listen, you go to the pharmacy, and guess what? You get the prescription filled. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that prescription is supposed to do wonders for you, or do something that it, it, you hadn't received before. So we're seeing today, we're going to see Jesus, listen, as our prescribed shepherd. <laughs> and we're looking at verse, uh, I believe verse 5, verse 5 of, 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 of Psalm 23 says, You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. That's the second part of verse 5, Psalms 23. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. See, we, we sung that song just before we ministered. Ministry is anointing. Glory to God. Anointing fall on me. Why is that? Because our heads need to be anointed with oil so our cup can run over. Amen? And who has, who has the anointing is the shepherd who prescribes it. He has prescribed, praise the Lord, the all for the anointing to pull on us. So we call him following the prescribed shepherd. Now, again, I want to go over this again, and, and, and some of you, many of you heard this, we say this again, and some of you first time listeners, and if you're a first time listener uh, to this broadcast, uh, again, I want to welcome you and thank you again. But, you know, people say the name Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, all right? And, and, and I wanted to give you a revelation of this, is that, listen, Christ was not Jesus' last name. Now, my name is Ronnie Simmons. Simmons is my last name. And people call me sometimes, you know, they'll say Ronnie Simmons. Why is that? Because there's a lot of Ronnies out there, and so they want to identify me as Simmons, Ronnie Simmons. So Simmons is my last name. So, you know, I'm, I'm a product of the late Ernest and Maddie Simmons. Those were my parents' last name. So I took upon them their last name. All right? So when people say Jesus Christ, they say it so much that they think that Christ was his last name. So I want to tell you that, listen, Jesus was not the son of Joseph and Mary Christ. All right? See, Christ... It is it's not a name, it's a title. He is known as Jesus, as the Christ. And, 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 and we understand that uh, because it's not his last name, it has a meaning. The, the, the name Christ comes from the Greek word Christos. And, and it means the anointed one and his anointing. So he is Jesus the anointed one and his anointed. He was anointed by God. He was sent by God. He was loved by God. Listen, to bring the anointing to his people. Hallelujah. So he is Jesus the Christ. Listen, when he stood in the trial, they asked him, are you the Christ? See, all right, all right, listen. So the word Christ is, is the Messiah. It's the one promised by God. It's the one sent by God. So again, he is 
Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing. So listen, if we are Christians, all right, we, people say, I'm a Christian, that means you are the anointed ones. You, 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 you can't be a Christian if you're not anointed. See, you just, listen, it's just a, it, listen, it's just a name. But we just don't want the name. We want the, what backs up the name. Hallelujah. So this word anointing or anointed is used in the Bible for basically two particular purposes. All right? See, it says, you anoint my hair with oil, my cup runs over. We're going to talk about the anointed and the anointed one. So let's look at, let's look at how this word anointed is used. Now, in the Bible, it was, it was used when an individual or something was anointed. It was anointed, listen, for service. It, 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 it was anointed for consecration. It, it, it represents someone or something, listen, that's been put aside or consecrated for the service of God. Our first example is 1 Samuel chapter 10, excuse me, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11 to verse 13, where God uh, uh, basically had to replace the first king of Israel by the name of Saul, and he was looking for someone to, to replace Saul, the king, uh, uh, to be the king of Israel. Because Saul, listen, just didn't act right. He didn't pan out right. You know, God told him to do some things. He didn't do it. God told him not to do the things. He did it anyway. You know, and God like, no, 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 no. We, they got to be another one. So he tells Samuel, who's the prophet, that listen, go down to Jesse's house. And uh, uh, there is one of Jesse's sons that who will be anointed. And, and so you're going to have to anoint him for that. And so... Uh, uh, he had seven sons who were present, and these boys were tall and, and big and strong and handsome, good looking, I mean, everything. And, and they would pass before Samuel, and you know, and uh, they like, Samuel, like, no, not you. Next to come. No, no, not you. you. You're good looking, but you're not anointed. You know, look at another come. You're strong. No, you're not anointed. Next to you're handsome, but you're not anointed. And so all seven of these guys go before Samuel and Samuel all stuff. No, nope, not at all. All right? And so verse 11 says, and Samuel said to Jesse, you know, the father, he said, now are all the young men here, are these all your sons? Then Jesse said, now there remains yet the youngest. But you see, he's keeping the sheep. Now how many of you know sheep don't smell too well at that? All right? So, so he's not before, he's keeping the sheep. Watch this. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. Bring him here to us. Let's take a look at it. Because these seven that you have, that, that's not the one who's going to be set aside. Now watch this. So he sent and brought him. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes. and he's red looking. But he was good looking. And the women said, Amen. All right. All right. <laughs> and the Lord said, Watch this. Arise, anoint him. For this is the one. Although he doesn't look good on the outside, but there's something about him. I, he's keeping his sheep, so these sheep are teaching him a lesson about some things. Anoint him. Now, watch this. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the Born of all and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord, watch this, came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So I want you to see the connection between the all, the anointing, and the spirit of God. The all, the anointing and the spirit of God, listen, was there upon David from that day forward that he had. Why? Because, listen, he was anointed for a service of God. He was anointed, he was consecrated for God. So all, again, an anointing here is a representative 
of the Spirit of God. It is a representing of the person of God. It is a representing of the presence of God. And it's a representative of the power of God. Please put that down. You don't want to miss that. So when you think about the Holy Spirit, I want you to see the person of God. I want you to see the presence of God. And I want you to see the power of God. That's all in the Holy Spirit. And the all was symbolic of that. But secondly, in the Bible, not only is anointing used for service, but anointing also is used for spiritual and physical healing. Spiritual and physical healing. And we as followers of Jesus Christ must be anointed for healing and forgiveness. Glory to God. Look at James chapter 5, verse 14 to verse 15. So he's talking about the anointing. See, anointing falls. See, the anointing is not just for you to jiggle and jump. All right? It's not for you just to have goosey bumps. That is a purpose. And it's for healing. So in James chapter uh, uh, 5, verse 14 to verse 15, it, it says this. If any of you are, if any of you are sick, because sometimes people get sick, just watch this. You should call for the elders of the church to come and to pray over you, anointing you with all in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Such a prayer offered in faith, watch this, will heal the sick. And the Lord, watch this, the Lord will make you well. It didn't say the preacher will make you well. It says the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, watch this, you will be forgiven. So we see a type of physical healing taking place. And we see a type of spiritual healing taking place with the anointing oil, praise the Lord, over individuals who have some sickness, whether it's a spiritual sickness, an emotional sickness, a mental sickness, a physical sickness, whatever kind of sickness they have, call for the elders of the church. And it's amazing, the Bible says call for the elders of the church, and you'll have people who tell me they don't need to be a part of a church. Oh, they are going to Oh, I don't need to be a part of the church. I say, well, every day the Bible must have missed something then. If you don't need to have the elders of the church, and you don't need to have the church, then why is it going to call the elders for? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Well, I want to call 911. Well, they may be, by the time 911 gets you, you may be too late. You, you got to have a hookup from church. You got to have some elders, some ministers, some men and women of God who know how to transact business on God's behalf. Praise the Lord. And you just take the little oil, the Lord again. Now, again, the healing is not an oil. The, he the healing is just somebody. Yes. Of the power, the presence, and the person of the Holy Spirit working on your body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And I, and this, and I will tell you what. Well, I don't think I believe on that. Well, one day you may believe in it. You know, when, when you go to the doctor and the doctor talking all the stuff, and you're like, oh, no, no. You better have, you better have a, a man or woman of God and a doctor who believes in the power of God. Glory to God. I mean, uh, I went to just this doctor's past week and uh, uh, visited the doctor and went in there and, uh, 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 you know, went on some things and so forth and all. And, uh, boy, I tell you, I mean, this week we, we had church in that room. Oh, a present power of God just came to play. We, we don't want to stop, you know. I, and we were like, oh, Doc, you got other patients. Praise the Lord. He's like, they wait, glory to God. I want the power of the present of the Holy Ghost. See, prayer changes situations. Hallelujah. So listen, you don't have to get your little thing all, you know. Don't call for much. You can get some, whatever you got olive oil or whatever it is. Or, and carry a little oil with you. Good. And, and go ahead and know them. Praise the Lord. Oh, little dad would do you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you just pray for it. So again, those are the two forces that we have. Now, the context of our text. Let's go back to uh, uh, Psalm 23. Because in Psalms 23 and in verse, we're talking about a relationship. Listen. Everybody say relationship. Relationship. Between the shepherd and the sheep. And, and, and we know that the shepherd loves the sheep. 
And we know that the shepherd has a, a, a responsibility to provide and to protect for the sheep. That's his nature. Because if a shepherd don't have sheep, he won't be a shepherd very long. So if you got a shepherd don't have any sheep, he's not a shepherd. He just don't follow up my walk. That's all it is, all right? Well, your sheep I don't have it. You ain't no shepherd, all right? <laughs> you you got to have some sheep. So he understands he has to take care of that. Now, one thing about a sheep, uh, a sheep experiences some challenges in all they have to do. And, and I'm told uh, by those who, who study sheep and shepherds over in North Africa that the sheep have various different types of enemies. And uh, one of the type of enemy are the wild creatures. You know, the lions, the tigers, the bears, oh my, lions, tigers, bears, oh my. They have those type of enemies. But there's another type of enemy that the sheep experience. And it's not as wild and ferocious as the wild beast. These are very, very small enemies. And one of the small enemies that a sheep will experience, it is called the nasal fly. Everybody say nasal fly. Nasal fly. Now, what makes this enemy to the sheep so dangerous is it's very, very small. And this fly at times will land on the nose of the sheep. And it sits there. And if it sits there for too long, what happens is, and I know it sounds kind of gross, you know, so if you got a weak stomach, you might want to close your eyes, but close your ears, but this nasal fly at times will begin to lay eggs. And they're very, very small. And these eggs basically will hatch. And the larva of these eggs, they're like little small worms. And these worms will begin to crawl up into the nostrils of the sheep. Now can you imagine? Little worms crawling up into your nostrils, and you don't have any hands to get them out. And so this draw, listen, this drives the sheep crazy. And so what does the sheep do? Like in other sheep, it wants to get rid of. It. So he'll shake his head. The little worms are still there. He'll all kind of do. Worms are still there. And it gets so bad, listen, that the sheep would actually find rocks and start beating his head up against the rocks. Mm. Or he'll find a tree and start beating his head against the tree. And if the shepherd, listen, if the shepherd does not get there in time, actually the sheep will kill himself. Why? Why? Because he's irritated, he's in pain, and this look, this little this little worm's all up in his nose, and so he's doing everything he can, and so again he's frustrated, he's irritated, he's beating his head against the rocks, he's beating his head against the trees, he's doing everything just to get some relief. And if the shepherd doesn't get there in time, the sheep will kill himself. But when the shepherd, a good shepherd, Recognize that there's something wrong with the sheep. That the sheep is acting abnormal. That the sheep, you know, is, I mean, can you imagine you walk up to somebody and they're just beating their head against the wall? That's abnormal. Or you beating your head against the rocks? That's abnormal. So when the shepherd realized, Deb said, uh uh, something's happening. And so there's only one remedy to give relief to the sheep. Is that the shepherd goes into his little pouch and he gets some oil out and he begins to pour the oil over the forehead of the sheep and that oil begins to drip down and it gets into the nostrils of the sheep 
And what happens is not only does it kill off the eggs of the nasal fly, but it begins to give relief to the sheep. And now the sheep can lie down for the first time. Why? Because of the anointing for the sheep. Well, I stop to tell you that some of us we deal with nasal flies. And many times it's not the big stuff. You know, it, it, it's not the, quote, the, 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 the big sins. The, the big, you know, people say, oh, oh you did the big. Oh, you, you did the big thing. See, we can recognize that many times. But what about the nasal fly? Because it's the object of the nasal fly to lay its eggs upon us. And when it lays its eggs, then what happens is it begins to affect our thinking. It begins to affect our attitude. And sometimes it's not so much of what you do, it's why you do it. You may do the right thing, we got a nasty attitude. Oh, you about to preach up your preaching. Why? Because the nasal flower has laid its eggs within your thinking. And now what happens is, because of that, you now experience the actual effect of a nasal flower. Begins, you become bitter. You become angry. You become jealous. You become envious. You become in guilt. You become having depression and you have loneliness and you have, listen, low self-esteem. What has happened? The nasal fly has laid its eggs upon you. And listen, what happens is to get rid of that stuff, you need the anointing oil of Jesus to anoint you. Because if you don't, just like the eggs drive that sheep crazy, it will drive you crazy. And that's why, listen, when you see people acting crazy, just say, mm. Those are nasal fly eggs. <laughs> yep. They will lay some eggs on somebody. <laughs> oh, they jealous, mm, nasal fly. They envious, mm, nasal fly. Mm, they worried all the time, mm, no, it's nasal fly eggs. They fearful, mm, nasal fly eggs. Apprehensive, nasal fly eggs. I always think people talk about them. Nasal fly eggs, don't even know them. Nasal fly eggs. And it drives, just like it drives the sheep crazy, it drives people. I mean, that's what it is. Just think about it. Why in the world oh, would, would, would somebody who don't know about it just take a, 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 a rifle and go and just start shooting people? See, something has affected their thinking. Just think about it. All the crazy stuff we've been hearing. Why? You see, and they're trying to say, well, we, we don't know what led them. I want to tell you, the nasal fly has laid eggs upon them, and now their thinking has been messed up. So notice here, remember the nasal fly is to get in here where our thinking is. That's why the Bible says, every thought has been brought down. Made subject to Christ. Cast down imagination. Because, listen, wrong thinking will lead you to wrong action. It works all the time. What it is? It's neighbor problem. So thank God for the anointing of a shepherd. So this is what we're going to do. Let me give you two things. Number one, first thing you're going to do, all right? The solutions to deal when those eggs have been laid upon you. And don't talk about Amy Lee. Oh, yes, you are. I see some people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear me talk. Have a good time on Sunday. On Monday, worry about how they're going to get by. Nasal fly eggs. God says something. Yeah, I know the Lord said that, but I, let me tell you, mm, nasal fly eggs. Now you're down with God says. So here's another. Number one, you have to bind that spirit of irritation and loose the spirit of anointing. Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. You got to bind and loose that spirit. When, listen, when your thinking starts messing up and you start feeling that type of way, you got to bind that spirit right there. Amen. Notice what it says. And he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. And whatever you bind on earth 
including irritations, including disappointments, including depression, including confusion, including worry, including fear. Whatever it is, you bind it on earth. Listen, it will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth, it will be loose in heaven. And so it's time for the body of Christ to start doing some binding and some loosening. And don't wait for the preacher to do it. You do it yourself. Because nobody knows your condition like you do. All right? Start, you start. Everybody say binding and loosening. Binding. All right, you know, like I said, a little, just a little stuff. See, sometimes it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Just the little stuff, the little irritations. You know? Somebody speak to you. What you want? My goodness. You walk on the wrong side of your cage. I mean, your bed just morning. <laughs> you know? Somebody say good morning to you. It ain't good morning yet. Why? I ain't had my third cup of coffee. See, that kind of stuff. See, that, that, you got to buy that spirit in the name of Jesus. See, that's, that's not a God. See, that's a nasal fly egg that don't hatch on you. That's what that is. <laughs> so you got to buy it. And then the second thing you're going to do is this. Be filled with this. You, you've got to be filled with this. I mean, you 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 got to be able. Listen, you got to be able to tap into the anointing of the oil of the Holy Spirit. You got to tap into it. Look in and receive the Holy Spirit. Look at Luke chapter eleven, verse eleven, through verse thirteen. Just kind of go over these things. Go over these quick. I want to get to the thrust of my message. <sighs> receive the Holy Spirit. Remember, the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. He says, "You fathers, if your children ask for fish, do you?" Give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, know much more, how much more will your heavenly Father, bless it, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for him? So you desire. I want this the person of the Holy Spirit. I want the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I want the power of the Holy Spirit working in my life. And you got to be adamant about that. Again, the person, presence, and the power, Father, I want in my life. I want it in my life. Then second, you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians 5, listen to me now, listen to me. Tell me now, come on. All this stuff, because if you don't, these nasal fly eggs will hatch themselves upon you. And you don't even know what's wrong with you. You cry, don't even know why you cry. You upset, don't even know why you're upset. You depressed, don't even know why you're depressed. You think nobody care about you. You think nobody loves you. See, those are nasal fly eggs hatching on you. And you need to be filled with the spirit. It's the oil that will take care of that. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, don't be drunk of wine. Because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit to not only fill you, but to control you. To control you. See, just as, listen, just as wine, see, wine is only, it, it's temporary. It'll give you a temporary fix. You know, that then people go to a party, you know, drink. I want to drink until I get a bug. And many times that buzz is a nasal fly buzz around your head. <laughs> I want to get a buzz. Yeah, it buzz. <laughs> but instead of getting drunk with wine, instead of letting wine control, Bible says, go. Instead, everybody say instead. Why? See, watch. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wine is temporary, it doesn't last long. But be filled with the Holy Spirit, which is permanent. And one translator says, not only be filled, but allow him to control you. See, I just want to be filled just to feel good. I want him to control my life. So when he controls my life, then this, he begins to anoint me. And so when those nasal flies come around, I know what it is. I said, no, no. Now listen, you're not coming over here. You're not laying in eggs on me. No, 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 no. I'll swat you away. You got to buzz on off. So instead of you trying to get a buzz, you better tell, tell that nigga fly buzz on off. <laughs> uh, you see why I don't get invited to too many parties, man? You know? <laughs> Boy, I'm a party pooper. He said, you ain't no fun. I said, 
But the anointing, hallelujah. Now, let's go ahead. Conclude. When our heads are anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit, we cannot contain ourselves. Oh, glory to God. Watch. And our lives will overflow and others around us will share in this blessing. See, I, I, I know when, when the anointing death, then listen, you can't contain yourself. Hallelujah. Glory. See, listen, it, it's no longer normal. It's no longer business as usual. Okay? See, you listen, you won't you won't be politically correct. Because <laughs> you listen, you don't care about all that stuff. You just want the Holy Spirit to control your life and not only influence you, but you will influence others. Now, now look in second, look in Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-one and verse twenty-two, and then we'll look at these other scriptures and we're gonna be finished out because I, I want I, some things I want to do today. I, I, I want you to get a revelation that the Holy Spirit wants to do in these times that we're living with our family, with our friends, with our finances, you know, with our physical health, with our food. Things that influence us. Because we want the anointing to anoint our head with oil. And not only that, we don't want to stop that. We want it to overflow. Hallelujah. Listen, we want to get into the overflow. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. He says, now watch this. Now he who establishes us. That word establish means to build us. He who establishes us with you in Christ. Watch this has anointed us is God. We are anointed. Watch this. He has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So listen, say I'm anointed of, anointed of God. Listen, if you're watching this by Facebook, would you please type that in right there? Say I'm anointed of God. See, I'm anointed of God. Listen, you may not be a part of the five-fold ministry of apostle, prophet, uh, pastor, evangelist, teacher, but listen, because you love Jesus, listen, it says he established you, notice, in Christ, in the anointed one, and his anointing, listen, he has anointed you. When people tell you you're nobody, you tell them I'm anointed. When people try to mistreat you on your job, you need to know, my friend, that you are anointed of God. You are anointed to get that job. You are anointed to get that promotion. You are anointed to get all these things. Children, young people, you are anointed to make good grades. Failure is not an option. Not when a person is anointed. Why? Because when the anointing shows up, two things happen. Burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed. Hallelujah. So when your anointing shows up, you say, listen, self, 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 huh? you are anointed. Mm -hmm. Some of you need to look in the mirror and say, listen, you are anointed. Because, see, that's my island preacher. I was talking to a person, and they was telling me that they go to this church, and this is, I'm not going to call the name of the church, but they say every time they go there, the preacher always says, oh, you're just an old sinner. Oh, you're just an old sinner. And if you don't stop doing this, you're going to hell. If you don't stop doing this, you're going to, no, no. What you would tell me is say, you know, I'm anointed. And anointed people, praise the Lord, we are anointed of God. That's who we are. And listen, when you remind yourself who you are, then you know what you have. And when you know what you have, then you know what you can do. Sinners practice sin. Anointed people practice the anointing. And the Bible didn't say, I, I, I'm a sinner by God. It says, I'm anointed by God. And my friend, you are anointed. Say this, I'm anointed. Look at somebody say, friend, you're anointed. See, we don't hear this enough. We, see, we need to know this. And he established us in Christ, not because of we, all we are. He established in Christ because he's anointed us. Why? To do a job. Whatever job you have right now, you are anointed to do that job. And you have to get rid of the nasal flower eggs that have hatched upon you and tell you what you can't do. That have told you what you can't have. That have told you who you're not. You are not of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I, I, I was in this lady. She was telling, telling us the, the story about, uh, about she met this man. You know, and uh, let's just say he was a little homely looking. 
I, I'll be very nice by saying that. And, and she just kept telling them, say, you know what? You listen, you 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 anointed our God. You anointed our God. You anointed our God. All of a sudden, it just like his entire posture changed. He started dressing right. He started making more money. <laughs> he started getting promotion. Hallelujah. You know, and and, 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 and it was a, he had a before picture and an after picture. It was be, before the anointing. All right, BC. But then after the anointing, AD, after deliverance, glory to God. And he didn't try to never why? It was kind of no. I, I'm gonna tell you, anointing can listen, make a brother look better. <laughs> Hallelujah! And you start speaking, I'm anointed. I start speaking, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. See, if you want to get people delivered from drugs and all that kind of stuff, let them start confessing about a hundred times I'm anointed. Okay? Listen, they go to all the therapies they want, and I'm not against this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against them. But I'm simply saying is you need to practice who you are. You are anointed. And you start telling yourself, say, Seth, you are anointed. So why do you want to do that? You are anointed. Why do you want to get into that? You are anointed. Why do you want to, to take advantage? No, no, you are anointed. And anointed people, listen, we're anointed our God. And you start saying it, and what's deliverance is? I'm telling you, it'll happen. Glory to God. You want to get out of debt? That's it. I'm anointed. By God. Praise the Lord. And what's, what, watch what's, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you and anoint your head. Will give you witty ideas. Y'all got to listen. You got to listen to me now. Witty ideas. Witty inventions. You've been doing something the wrong and so And he'll show you the right way because you are anointed by God. You say, and you look at his hands and say, these hands you are anointed. Let's, let's do it right now. Some of y'all look at your hands. Say hands. 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 In the name of Jesus, you are anointed by God. By God. Look at your feet. Say feet. In the name of Jesus, you are anointed by God. By God. Look at your hands. Say mine. In the name of Jesus, you are anointed by God. You start saying that. Watch you start that. People start treating it. Man, they just mistreat me. No, they can't mistreat it. I know them. Because the Bible says, you know, don't touch my property, do my anointing one no harm. See, don't touch my don't touch my anointing one. Do, don't do my property no harm. When you're anointed, people just can't mistreat you in a kind of way. You gotta say you gotta say you don't know what you're messing with. You said you you say you want some of this. <laughs> when you know they're anointed. Now, so you're anointed by God. He said, and watch this. So he says, who has sealed us and given us a spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Why is he doing it? That says, you know what a guarantee is? It's, it's what we call when we buy a house. It's what we call earnest money. <coughs> and what earnest money is, earnest money is to put down here. It's guaranteed that the house, you're going to get the house, and much more is coming your way. It's the down payment of something greater. The Holy Spirit is anointing us to let you know that this is just a foretaste of what God wants to do in your life. Hallelujah! He said, I'm putting the Holy Spirit, but you know what? That's just the start. It's not the end. And you'll do great things. You'll do great works. you have great opportunities. Hallelujah! Why? Because the Holy Spirit is upon you and you have the anointing. How you doing, Jesus? Woo! Glory to God. The Bible says, just write this down, don't turn it Write this down. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Right. Don't, 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 we don't have time. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all who oppressed of the devil. That's what Acts 10 says. But you know what I do? Every morning, every morning, every morning. I take name Jesus and I put my name. And I put your name. I say how God anointed Ronnie and Terry Simmons of House of Faith Christian Center and partners of friends of Ronnie and Simmons Ministries with the Holy Ghost and with power and that we'll go about doing good and we'll heal all the oppressed of the devil for God is with us. Say, so I just take Jesus and put my name in. You can do the same thing when you know you got the anointing. Glory to God. Because if he's Christ and I'm a Christian, 
I'm anointed like he's anointed. I know somebody will mention, oh, I didn't know that. Well, you keep thinking what you want to. I'm just saying what the Bible says. See? God anointed Jesus of with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all the by the devil, but God with him. So you just put your name. How God anointed Ronnie Simmons at House of Faith Christian Center. And really, I, I, I got to you, see, I don't say center. I say nation. I say House of Faith Christian nation. Because we're not just a church. We're, we're in fact. <laughs> and partners of Ronnie Simmons Ministries. See, you're part with the church. You're part of Ronnie Simmons Ministries. What? The power. Holy Spirit and power. And guess what we're going to do? Because we're anointed, guess what? We're going to go around doing good and healing all the press. But what's, what's, what, 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 what's, what's the solution for the anointing? When people are anointed, they won't act the food. The anointing won't let them do it. Listen. I mean, whenever they try to get something, let that anointing come on there, they're like, oh, you can't do that. I was hearing about one guy, listen, he listen, he went to a party. And he went, he was, he was gonna get into the party, you know, and, and, and a guy came behind him and says, What you doing here? So what you doing here? He said, What you talking about, man? Mind your own business. He said, You know you're not gonna be here. You're anointed. He said, Man, you gotta mind your own business. And, and he, he, he said, no, I'm going to be here. The guy said, no, you're not going to be here. And the guy says, you know what, i tell you what. To show you I'm going to be here, if I get up to the line and doors are closed, I can't get in, I know I'm anointed. He said, okay. Did you know when the guy got up to the door, they said, doors are closed, nobody else can get in. <laughs> and he looked around, and this guy was gone. He said, from this day forward, I can't find that guy. Because a guy had to remind him that he was anointed. And the only dance he was going to do is the Holy, Holy Ghost dance. Okay? So instead of him trying to bag it up, he bagged himself out of there. <laughs> Why? Because he's anointed. <sighs> Let, let's close this up. I'm almost out of time. Okay. Go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 4. And verse 37 and verse 41, we'll close out. I'm talking about how when you are anointed, the anointing comes and not only affects you, but it affects people around you. And this is how the cup begins to overflow. Because we are blessed to be a blessing when the anointing comes. It says on the day of Pentecost, oh, about 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, uh, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled. Everyone present, everyone present, watch this, was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them a gift. You see that? They were there waiting. All right? They were there on earth waiting. And then the wind came. And then the fire. And that's how we got earth waiting. Shining stuff for you to see. <laughs> <laughs> I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to preach. I'm going to have fun. Now, y'all got to accept. I'm going to excuse you. Y'all got to go. I'm going to have a good time. But I want you to get this. Some of you people say, who works on the fire? We'll, we'll talk to you. Right? <laughs> Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is there. But I want to show you, by them speaking in tongues, it was not just gibberish. It was not just 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 something that they did. It was a person, the presence, and the power of God showed up. And because of that, some people begin to mark and begin to say, you know, what, you know, what's what's going on? What's going on? Well, what's all this language? We hear everyone speaking our own language, you know. And then some of the other people say, well, you know, they must be drinking some new wine. Peter stood up and says, no, it's too early for that. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. And he began to preach a message. 
so powerful. Let me show you what happens when you have the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Go down to verse 37 to verse 31. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him, and to the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, each one of you must repent of your sins. Watch this. Turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to show that you have received the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, st strongly urging all his listeners. He says, save yourself from this crooked generation. Listen, save ourselves for what's going on in the media. Save ourselves for what's going on in our country. Save ourselves for all these things that we have. You got to save ourselves. Wow, the Holy Spirit would do that. And what happens is, my friends, when we preach and teach and share this message, verse 41 says, those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church. The church that people talk about. The church that people say, I don't need to be a part of. The church that people make fun of. That same church, 3,000 people were added in that one day. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. The person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we said, don't we? Follow All of us, that people will see what we're doing. It is not about sins. It is not just a feeling. It's a force. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit is all upon us. Our heads are now being anointed with oil. Where well, we've been bruised, where well, we've been battered, where well, we've been cut, where well, we've been lacerated. But stuff had gone in our heads, but now the Holy Spirit has come. And that anointing has come upon us. And now our cups are on the floor. We realize we're not here for ourselves. We're here to not make a living, but to make a difference. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So if your life, as you close out, is not being transformed, then you are not following Jesus as your prescription. This is his prescription, Holy Spirit. Pastor, I've got a lot of issues. Prescription, Holy Spirit. Pastor, I'm depressed. I'm confused. What do you suggest? Prescription, Holy Spirit. Let's stand on our feet. We're going to look at seven confessions regarding following Jesus our prescriptive shepherd. And he prescribes the Holy Spirit what you're going through. Holy Spirit will reveal to you. You don't know what to do. Holy Spirit will You need guidance. You need direction. Holy Spirit, prescription. We'll give you all of that. All right? As you look at your sheet right now, say this. I confess, I confess that, Jesus that Jesus Christ is my prescriptive shepherd. Not and I will follow him. Number two says, I confess that I have been anointed and set aside for the service of God. Number three says, I confess I have been anointed to provide healing and forgiveness. Number four says, I confess that I bind the spirit of irritation and I loose the spirit of the anointing. Number five, so I confess that I tap into the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. Number six, I confess that because of the anointing, my life will overflow and others around me will share in the blessing. And number seven, so I confess that I'm following Jesus Christ as my prescriptive shepherd. And my life is being transformed. Praise the Lord. Let's take our prayer commitment. Ready? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that Jesus Christ is my prescriptive shepherd. And I will follow him.
I thank you that I have been anointed and set aside for your service and for healing and forgiveness. I bind the spirit of irritation and I loose the spirit of the anointing. I thank you that you allow me to tap into the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. My life will overflow and others around me will share in the blessings. Jesus is my prescriptive shepherd and my life is being transformed. As I realize this, I understand, Father, that you have given me a grace to follow your son in 2021. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Now listen, you watch this broadcast, uh, social media, whether it's uh, Facebook Live, Instagram, YouTube, wherever it is. The Bible says no one can confess Jesus as Lord except to be by the Holy Spirit. And my friend, listen, Jesus, he wants to be your shepherd, but he also wants to be Lord of your life. And when you allow him to be the Lord of life, Listen, you start receiving his presence, his person, and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And if you've never done that before, you can do that. You say, what do I need to do? It's as simple as ABC, my friend. I mean, it's simple as ABC. Don't, don't complicate this. A says you have to admit that you're a sinner. And you desire, you, listen, you deserve to die in your sin. Yes, you do. B says you have to believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And now, you listen, you're ready to repent of all your sins, past tense, present tense, and future tense. And then C says, you confess him as your Lord and Savior. That's it. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes in and you start seeing the revelation of Jesus. That's what it's all about. So let me pray for you right now when you watch this stuff on the I want to pray for you. And I don't want you just to listen to my words. I want you to listen to my heart. And if your heart is hooked up, and you need deliverance in your life, the Holy Spirit has come to do that for you. To get those nasal flies, to get those headaches, get those stuff that's been hatched. Bad thoughts, bad memories, bad relationships, all those things are hatched eggs of the nasal flies. And the Holy Spirit wants to do a work in your life. So let me just pray for you. Say this, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you've sent Jesus to be my prescriptive shepherd. I admit I'm a sinner. I deserve to die my sin, but I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And now I confess it to the Lord. Thank you for being my shepherd. Thank you, Father, for leading me. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit work in my life. And because I confess with my mouth to the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, I am now saved. Thank you for saving my life. In Jesus' name, but amen. My friend, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to be the first one to congratulate you and say thank you so much. And more important, welcome to the family of God. Because I want to tell you, the family of God is the greatest family upon this earth. And you are now a part of that. But listen, understand now, you can't do this by yourself. You need some assistance, you need some help. And so therefore, it's important you to hook up with a local church. To have pastors and pastors and, 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 and members and friends that will be praying with you and praying for you. And so there's a number on the screen that you can call and, and just share information with us. That number, phone number is 615-223-0420. 615-223-0420. Call that number. Leave your name and someone from our ministerial staff will get back and contact you and welcome you officially to the family of God. So I want to say congratulations to you. And you have made a wise decision by now asking Jesus to be your prescriptive shepherd. What does he prescribe for you? The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not a it, he's a person. And listen, he is to you today what Jesus was to those 12 disciples 2,000 years ago. And you're gonna be a part of that. So I wanna say congratulations for that. God bless you and we love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's a powerful word, I tell you. My goodness, I oh. Amen. And I just touched the service on that. You study those scriptures, you go home, and, and that'll be a blessing to you. But listen, we're going to continue in worship the Lord. We're now going to partake of the Lord's Supper uh, that we have. And uh, I forget to mention that, but quickly, listen, go get you some juice, go get you some bread. And uh, we want you to commune with us here at House of Faith Christian Center, the Holy Spirit. Uh, he, listen, uh, he wants to do great things too. 
And one of the things he does is bring back things remember that Jesus said. So again, you know, the bread that you're going to have, the juice that you're going to have, is symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of these sins. And so again, you want to go ahead and do that right now. We're just going to pray over these elements right now. And we're going to take and we want you to share with us. Again, holy communion. Holy communion. See, without the Holy Spirit, it, it doesn't make it back. But with the Holy Spirit, he shows you where to end. All right. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus as we come to partake of the Lord's Supper. Thank you that you have forgiven us of all of our sins. Thank you that you cleanse us. And the Holy Spirit is that cleansing power in our lives. And now we have a right to sit at the table and partake. So as we come to take of the Lord's Supper for those around us, right now, fill us, control us with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. The Bible says, when the night of Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take heed, this is my body, which was broken for you. He said, often as you do this, do the remembrance of me. And then in like manner, he took his cup and as he blessed it, he said, this is a new testament in my body. As often as you do this, do remember to me. And so we come together to partake of the Lord's Supper, the bread, symbolic of, of our healing. We talk about our healing in the name of Jesus. Spiritual, physically, emotional, mental healing. That bread does that. The Bible says by his stripes, we are healed. And then we take the juice, the juice simply about, about forgiveness of our sins. That this all of our sins have been forgiven. Past tense, present tense, and future tense of our sins. And that's what Jesus did there. And listen, and he gives us the Holy Spirit as the guarantee of future things to take place. And so this bread that you hold is for your healing. This juice that you drink is for your forgiveness of your sins. And all of this took place at Calvary. And the Holy Spirit just reminds us how much Jesus loves us. How much he loves us. How much he loves us. How much he loves us so much. That's what you hear. The promise of the Holy Spirit is a love promise. Thank you for Jesus. So let's fold up our bread. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us eat. Our cup, blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us drink. Holy Spirit, who's welcome in this place. His person, his presence, and his power is welcome. He said, You're welcome, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you so kindly for participating in our Lord's Supper. We pray that God's blessings upon you in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to continue on in worshiping the Lord. Praise the Lord. This has been an awesome service. If it's not over with yet, we still want to come and want to give you an opportunity also to participate as well as participating in sharing of your love gift that God has blessed you. And so here at House of Faith, uh, we have an opportunity to give and God has blessed us. If you need an offering on the road, you like to give, just raise your hand and one of these servants will come and, and share with you uh, concerning uh, giving. Praise the Lord. And if you uh, watch this broadcast again, uh, we want to give you an opportunity to give and share. There are three ways in which you can give. The first way you can give, uh, basically, is uh, text giving. Uh, you can download the app, House of Faith Christian Center. Uh, download that app on your phone and just follow the instructions. And you can give as God has blessed you uh, to, to give. The second way you can give is online giving, which is one of the most popular ways. You just go to our website. This is over here, House of Faith Christian Center dot org and slash giving. And then finally it says donate. Click on that one. And then you just give as God has blessed you. If you'd like to share with one of some of his ministers, feel free to do so as well. And then the third way that you can give is to check the money orders. I give through the mail to our our, our, our Address, which is House of Faith Christian Center, Post Office Box 95, Smyrna, Tennessee, Zip Code 3716. Now, here's, six, seven. here's the thing about it. Listen, no gift is too small. No gift is too large that you can give because you're supporting the ministry. And that's why I said the Holy Spirit, listen, listen to him, what he's telling you to do. Listen to his voice. See, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. How do they do that? By the Holy Spirit. 
He opens up your ears so you can hear the voice of Jesus. So he's speaking to your heart today to give. Praise the Lord. So whatever he's giving you, thank you, Lord Jesus. So you can't pay God, but you can say, Lord, I thank you for all that you did. And so listen, we want to get in agreement with you with your offering uh, that you have right here. And remember, this offering that you're going to give, whether it's giving here at House of Faith Prison Center right now or giving online giving or whatever it is. See, although it may leave your hand, it'll never leave your hand. Because you're sowing good seed on good ground. So let me pray for you over your offering that you have. Praise the Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you for this offering. We're giving of ourselves to you. And we love you, Lord Jesus. You're so awesome. So receive us, Father God. Receive our offerings. And we can believe you for great things, Father, through the Holy Spirit. Whether it be jobs, better jobs, raises, bonuses, deliverances, salvations, restorations, you know, in all that we do, we give it to you in Jesus' name. We pray, amen and amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to just go receive an offer and get a meeting offer on the Lord. Raise your hand and we're going to do a In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. You just sow that right now in the name of Jesus' name. Glory to you. Thank you, Father. Well, this, this has been an awesome worship experience, and I want to thank each one of you all for watching this broadcast this had. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie New Simmons, Pastor House of Faith Christian Center. And again, thank you for getting liking and sharing, sharing this uh, broadcast. Uh, praise the Lord. Send us some of your friends that can look at it, you know, in the comments, and those things as well. Any kind of way we can give lessons to you, please let us know. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie New Simmons, Pastor House of Faith Christian Center. Uh, and we want to thank you so much. Remember, our ministry, we have a threefold vision. That is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and advance that center. We have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Again, we come on every Sunday morning at the same time. And we do want to let you know something, praise the Lord, that Jesus is Lord and continue to show compassion in our action. And we'll see you all next time. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Let's go ahead and stand for our mission statement that we have. Ready? Let's read. Our vision here at House of Faith is to exalt the Savior in every area of our lives, equip ourselves to become world changers, and evangelize the sinner, which is the great commission of Jesus Christ for the kingdom of God. Our mission here at House of Faith is to proclaim Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing as head of the church. Our main objective is to teach the word of God with clarity, simplicity, and understanding so that it may be applied to our daily lives.